right, folks, here is the lead headline in this new report detailing the hiring of staff in the U.S. House Representatives. New report finds people of color nearly absent from top staff positions. Now, you might remember, of course, uh, last year we talked about the United States Senate uh, and their lack of black folks being in top positions. Uh, other findings of this report, the American public are more likely, more likely to elect a person of color to the House than members are to hire top staff of color. Of 329 white members of the United States House, 16 have chiefs of staff of color more Republicans than Democrats. Over a quarter of members represent diverse districts but have no top staff of color. No Latinos hold top positions as well. Spencer Overton, you of course head of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies. And so uh, this is, so, so explain Republicans have more top staffers of people of color right. than Democrats. More top chiefs right. than Democrats. Chiefs of staff. Too. Chiefs of staff. That's absolutely right. And uh, a big issue here is white Democrats in particular, right? The bulk of the top staff who are black come from the CBC. So like 85% of the Democrats' top staff comes from CBC members. But if you look at white Democrats, only 2% of their top staff is black. Now, now just... You know, think about this. 21% of Democratic voters are black folks, right? And so there's a, a reliance on black voters, but very few uh, black, very few top staff are black for white, that white Democrat. And, and this is precisely why, Tiffany, they have to be called out uh, and put on front street and challenge. And I use the phrase political sharecroppers for a reason, because what they want is they want black folks, just like uh, white plantation owners did, wanted us to till the land, mm -hmm. work the land, mm -hmm. deliver, the, uh, deliver the crops, but then don't want to pay. And so Democrats want to get votes, uh, want us to get out there and campaign and deliver them to the promised land. But when it comes to getting contracts, when it comes to getting jobs and opportunities, it's okay, we'll see you later. Right. Well, what's interesting is, one, not only were Republicans more likely to have chief of co uh, people of color who are chiefs of staff, it was only 10. I saw the number for Democrats was only six. Right. So that's 16 people that right. are chiefs of staff, and right. that's not a lot at all when you no, talk for, about for the House. Folks, yeah. for, for white for folks, when you talk about right. the House at all. We're not talking about black folks. We're talking about people of color. People of color, that's right. That's another thing. I wonder what the gender demographic of this looks like, right? So interestingly, 61% of black staff are, black top staff are women. Uh, with Latinos, it's about 45% of women. Okay. It's about 25% in terms of Asian Americans. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. and so when I think about those numbers, which is really alarming mm -hmm. to me, because mm -hmm. I think about the folks who are actually doing the work of connecting with the constituents on the ground, right. those folks need to represent and come from those communities. Right. And a lot of those communities that we're talking about are people of color. Right. And, and those right. white Democrats, they're not in all white districts, right? So the right, average exactly. white Democratic district is 37% people of color, right? right? But they, they just have very few people of color in top positions. Liz, you would think yeah. that, um, you would think that this is a story to tell for Republicans, uh, but uh, well, but even they can probably we're proud. Screw, we have screw, screw that one up. Uh, and, and this, oh, but, 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 but this, this goes to, again, what happens in our politics where, where black people and, and again, I, for anybody who's watching, I need you to understand how all of these things are connected. What happens is, if you're not getting these top positions uh, among these positions in the House, what then happens is you're not then getting the jobs after you leave Congress. So when it comes to lobbyists, when it comes to PR shops, when it comes to all of these particular places, you're not getting any of these jobs. And so we're frozen out of those opportunities, which is how we're able to build and create wealth. Right. I couldn't agree more. And so when I looked at the actual um, uh, study when it came out of the uh, members of the House, it was those who had districts that were 33 uh, percent uh, black and, you know, the, the breakdown there. But as a as a black Republican, I'm looking at this report and I'm seeing the I'm looking up Will Hurd in Texas fourth or Mia Love. I'm sorry, Will Hurd in Texas 23rd, Mia Love in Utah's fourth. And they are both African-American Republicans, both of them the first black Republicans from their respective states to actually make it to the House, and they were not on the list. And so I, then I looked at the areas that they were representing to see if, well, you know, what are the demographics of those areas? And both are coming from majority white districts. And so there could be an argument made that they're going to have individuals in their staff that's going to be reflective of the district, but I don't buy it. 
being a, a, a double minority, you know, a minority in my political group and often a political minority in my ethnic group, I think it's incumbent upon Black Republicans to make sure, to your point, Roland, that Black Republicans are in the chief of staff position because they're the ones that are taxed to be able to go to these foundations, to these lobbying firms, these, uh, these law firms. And we need, I've always said it, we not only need representation, but power in both parties. And you can get to that party, I mean, you can get to that power either through the elected uh, official role or as a chief of staff or as a thought leader and be in the room. And so I think they, they failed, specifically Congressman Will Hurd and Congresswoman Mia Love. Well, here's the thing that we have to understand right now, and that is, uh, with the elections that we have seen take place, when January comes, you're going to have more than 50 members of the House Democratic right. Caucus right. who are in the Congressional right. Black Caucus. Right. Right. The largest, the CBC is the largest caucus in the, on the Democratic side. Right. And it's telling that if they can't find black people, right. and, I'm not, and, I, and look, I'm not saying people of color, Okay, I'm saying black right. people. Right. You can't. Right. And also, first of all, define top position. So chief, right. chief of staff, chief of staff, legislative, legislative director, executive. communi communications director, right there. But then also staff directors for committees. And then we looked at the leadership offices like Pelosi's, etc. Chiefs of staff, policy directors, and communications directors. Mm -hmm. so okay, so on the Democratic guys. side, uh, for Nancy Pelosi, right. What, what they got? So now she does have a communications director who's African American. Right? Steny so Hoyer. She, yeah, no. Joe Crowley. Uh, no. Uh, also Steve Cohen, Tennessee, Memphis. Memphis. No, no black, no of color uh, top staff. Yeah. Wow. Right. Uh, Clyburn is obviously in leadership. Yeah, he is in leadership, and he has Yebby, right, in terms of chief of staff. So he has a, a person. And again, I, and I know somebody at home is thinking, look, okay, that's all political. No, they don't understand. Right. Why it matters. When you start talking about jobs that are paying, not, not, not just jobs that are paying six figures, but also when they go hire somebody who's a top staffer, yeah. they then hire them and then come set up their offices. Yep. They now can then hire 10, 15, yep. 20, 30 right. people. Uh, and then if you don't have any people of color, any black folks, right. well, you're never going to get those kind of jobs. And they also help decide what's the priority of the office is going to be sometimes as well, right? So right. when my right. organizations have actually gone and done lobby visits, we're not usually meeting with the Congress member when they can't meet. We're talking to the legislative director or we're talking right. to the chief of staff right. person. And so when I think about that role, it's like, well, how much agency? And I'm not, I'm not making the color of your skin synonymous with the priorities that you're going to have. Right. Because we've seen that be different too right. and not always be on our side, but it's important for us to think about what are the opportunities that are being shown up for people of color in high positions and high offices in our government that are not just elected officials, right. but those who actually make those decisions. Spencer and, and, then Liz. Yeah. The CBC, yeah. though, is uh, carrying... Hold this one second. Go ahead, Spencer. The CBC then Liz. is carrying Democrats in terms of diversity. So, so no shot. 53% of CBC's top staff is black, and you compare that to... 2% of white Democrats' uh, top staff being black. So CBC has a, has a healthy number of top staff who are black. Liz? Yeah, I know this is timely with the Congressional Black Caucus uh, Foundation Annual Legislative Conference. I know that this is timely, but Spencer, I'm really interested to know what's going on in the Senate. Are you guys doing right. any uh, uh, data and research on that? Yeah, we did do a report on the Senate, and we found that there was very little diversity on the Senate side. So on the Senate side, it's about 7% of top staff are people of color. On the House side, about 13% of people of color. But see, always the assumption was there's no problem in the House because you got the CBC, you got the CHC. But there is a problem when you say that people of color make up almost 40% of the population in this country, but there are only just over 13% of top staff. There is a problem. Uh, what's next? So the next right. piece will be focusing on this fall in terms of November and after November. There will be a lot of openings. And how do we get people to hire both top staff of color and then also mid-level staff of color who can move into those top positions? <laughs>